Firstly, thank you for listening. Um, today is Earth Day. Earth Day is an annual international event which happens every April 22nd. It's where people come together to demonstrate their support for environmental protection. Um, a quote to summarise from earthday.org is, together we can prevent the coming of disasters of climate change and environmental destruction. Together we can restore our Earth. So to celebrate Earth Day today, we're speaking to founder of Vent for Change, a sustainable stationery company you may have heard of. We're speaking to Evan, who has kindly agreed to um, have this interview with us. So Evan, it's really nice to chat to you. Welcome. Yes, thank you very much for having me on and uh, happy Earth Day. Happy Earth Day to you too. Um, so for people who may not know about your brand or who are new to your brand, can you tell us a little bit about Vent for Change, please? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Vent for Change is a sustainable stationary brand that uh, protects the planet and supports children's education projects globally uh, with every item sold. So to sort of unravel that, uh, we have a range of stationary notebooks, pencils, pens, all made from uh, recycled and sustainable materials. Uh, and uh, from proceeds of every sale, uh, we, we donate towards existing education charities around the world, getting children back into school, uh, helping you know, set up schools, fix schools, etc. Excellent. Well, we're massive fans in the office. We've, I think there's not one member of staff who doesn't have a vent item in their stationary <laughs> arsenal, so we're big fans. Um, so Vent for Life started out its life in 2014. Um, we're just wondering, did you have any sort of eco-business ventures before that or was Vent your first project? I, I, I'm, I'm long in the tooth in this game. I've been an environmental entrepreneur uh, since 1999. And right. I set up uh, the parent company that, uh, the umbrella company, I suppose, for, for Vent for Change, which is called Everything Environmental, back in 2005. And the 2014 date that you refer to there was actually the year in which I bought a very run-down uh, piece of machinery that made pencils from old recycled plastic. Uh, so Vent actually wasn't born then, but it was the catalyst for what Vent became. Because after 18 months, two years of hard work by the engineers, this aging old run-down piece of machinery was making more pencils than we needed for everything environmental. Um, to the tune of about a million additional pencils every year, over and above what we actually needed. Uh, so that took us into sort of 2015-16 and then uh, I realised that I wanted to do something with that spare capacity of pencils, you know, something a bit more inspirational uh, than ringing up our customers and saying, look, I've got, you know, a million more pencils here, you've all got to buy more pencils. Uh, sadly, that's not how business works, even if I'd asked, I doubt they would have all upped the ante. Uh, and the pencil is the most iconic educational tool going back centuries. So with that in mind, I thought, well, what can I do with these pencils? Uh, there was uh, news stories uh, at the time, 2016, 17, of natural disasters, uh, war and conflict. There was a all multitude of uh, news stories, which it very clearly was showing on every report, whether in the, in the press and newspapers, television, et cetera, that actually children were being affected. Uh, by these natural disasters, by earthquakes, by typhoons, um, etc., and uh, and education is the most important thing that you can give a child uh, to pull themselves and their families out of poverty. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll give the pencils away. Um, so I rang NGOs and uh, I, I rang international, local, national charities, saying, "No, I've got loads of pencils. Who wants them?" Uh, which I'm sure they thought that was very sweet, but uh, it wasn't. <laughs> None of them turned me down flat, but they all came back to me and said, look, you know, at the end of the day, even, you know, we can get pencils pretty cheap in Nepal and in Tibet and places like that. And actually what we need is blackboards and uh, roofs on the schools and we need to pay teachers. Uh, so I decided to sort of start selling the pencils and to support those projects that were already uh, go going on, you know, from some of the proceeds. So that was about 2017 when we actually started selling some of the pencils online. Great. It's just a fantastic inspirational story, isn't it? Um, so you, you touched upon just then um, the, the pencils that were made from the recycled plastics. I think was that the CD cases um, that it originally it started as. 
Um, can yeah, you tell yeah. us a little bit about now, because you've got a, a broader range, you've got your notebooks made from recycled materials and your pens. Can you tell us about those materials and how they benefit the planet in a similar way? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, you have to sell a lot of pencils to start raising any significant cash for these projects. So, you know, as, as much as the pencil was the sort of flagship cornerstone of, uh, of, our, of our messaging and there's other things that we've used, which we might come on to later that incorporate the pencil. Uh, it, it was important to raise money. We needed to sort of sell uh, bigger ticket items. So we've developed a range of uh, notebooks. Uh, we sell pens as well. We're about to launch some uh, little pencil cases and pouches, etc. The notebooks uh, we make from a multitude of different sources. Um, and, and a lot of them are sold by yourselves on your site. So, you know, customers, retailers alike can go and have a look at them. But some are made using very sort of traditional, uncoated, uh, clearly recycled grey boards. Uh, I always say they're sort of unashamedly proud to be recycled. And, you know, they're, they're just it looks recycled. It is recycled. And some people like that. So there's grey boards uh, which are recycled with FSC certified uh, paper. We have a red. That's the right collection. We have another collection uh, called Make a Mark where we have recycled leather covers, leather that's been recovered from the Italian uh, fashion industry. Uh, so, so they're made in Italy, a great quality books, a lovely tactile finish on them, the Make a Mark. And inside, again, they've got an FSE certified paper. I'm not one to stick entirely with sustainability or with recycling. I like to take a holistic approach. Uh, and over 20 years in the industry, I think that, that that stood me in good stead to take biodegradable, to take recycled, to take sustainable. So some of our range is um, recycled, some is sustainable, the FSC. The Ideas Collection's got quite an intriguing material. We have a recycled card that's mixed with a 30% corn pulp. Um, and then some of our ranges that are coming out later in the year might incorporate other cards and papers also that include uh, reconstituted, reclaimed cherry, coffee beans, lavender plant, that sort of thing as well. So that comes from the food industry and that would have otherwise just gone into landfill or, or pig's will, et cetera. So we've been able to utilize some interesting materials in the covers of that. Um, I make pens out of recycled plastic drinks bottles. You haven't seen them yet. <laughs> oh, are they are they not out yet? Are they? They're out yet later in the year. Yeah. In fact, oh, I'll watch this space. Them. Yeah, watch that space. Um, so there's going to be interesting developments coming through on that. Uh, and then we've mixed uh, a multitude of different recycled materials with sustainable ones to to create the range. And then some of it is 100% recycled. I make yeah. uh, some of our list pads and notepads here in the UK from 100% recycled. Uh, card, paper, etc. So everything's got that message. Oh, great. So people listening, there's some hot new products to come your way. So watch this space. And watch exactly. this space. Yeah. Um, so that's the sort of eco, eco thinking behind the actual product. Are there any eco, um, like eco-friendly practices you have within your, like the factory and the facilities that you can tell us about? So I'm thinking like, using alternative and um, like renewable energy, any efficient ways of working um, that you can maybe give us an insight into? Well, I mean, as an office, we obviously try and do everything that we can when we're not working from home. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we have our, uh, you know, we, we, we have best practice uh, in the office in terms of what we can recycle and what we should recycle. And that goes for our warehousing as well. Uh, all of our packaging, the pencil sleeves, the pen sleeves, uh, that that's all recycled card, uh, all of the inner and outer cartons. We even use a paper tape to shut the cartons down rather than plastic tapes and things like that. So it goes quite deep. Um, and using the, the materials that we do, obviously, within the, 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 the design of the product um, goes a long way to, to, to you know, do creating best practice. We have got some, uh, again, it's slightly in development, so I don't want to give it away too much, but we've got some, uh, we've got some notebook covers that might be coming out just before Christmas. Um, the paper, the card materials there, it, it's all produced in factories which use 100% uh, renewable energies uh, and things like that. So, uh, great. Yeah, yeah, it's, we strive for best practice. No one can be perfect. Yeah, um, and, and I think that's a really important message to get across. We can all try and make responsible purchasing decisions. Um, 
but if every single element of every item you bought had to be gold standard, you wouldn't be able to buy anything. Yeah. Um, and that goes for when you, you're, you're buying your you know, food in a, in a shop or the clothes that go on your back, whatever. We all have to you know, take into consideration what's available to us. Uh, but so, so we have this great sort of term, you know, we, we strive for best practice and where there is an alternative, we will, uh, we will try and use that, that alternative to, yeah. Yeah. So it might not be so good for the environment yeah yeah no totally with you i think we're similar at tradecraft and that we you can't be the finished polished picture can you because like yeah. it just is it doesn't work like that it's small steps but as long as they're in the right direction then it's that's right possible. yeah what well, one pencil at a time well, that's right <laughs> yeah over from my side um evan there we know that you obviously started out um by buying a rundown factory uh, which obviously, you know, you started um, making the pencils from recycled CD cases. Have you always wanted to create it, um, you know, a sustainable stationary range, always purchasing this factory was the reason behind this route? Uh, <laughs> have I always wanted to? Of all the products that I launched through Everything Environmental, which is uh, which is quite a broad range, that, that that business services environmental and sustainable product into the advertising sector. So it includes a, n a number of things from bags to lanyards, frisbees, notebooks and things like that. I always had a penchant whenever I was creating that range uh, for the notebooks that we were selling. And I'm a bit old school in that. I'm a bit of a stationary nerd I, mean, I, I do love to go into a stationery shop and oh. you know you speak into the right people <laughs> exactly we absolutely we're exactly the same preaching like the, about a notebook exactly preaching to the converted oh. so <laughs> so once i'd sort of once i'd gone down this route of making the pencils and deciding that i was going to sell them then i was super excited about creating a range that might in Incorporate notebooks yeah. um, uh, of all different styles, shapes, and sizes, and uh, and to be part of that design process, uh, it, it kind of it sits well with me. Yeah. I don't think I I don't think I sort of came out of my thirties or forties thinking, okay, one day I want to set up a sustainable stationery brand. Um, yeah. It's been very uh, fluid the, the, the creation of of Vent, and I think at the cornerstone of that is the environment and what we can do for children's education. But actually, I've taken a great deal of pleasure in you know, trying to understand the retail world, but also yeah. designing different products for what people might like. And uh, so the event was born out of the, 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 the pencil machine, but yeah. uh, but, but willingly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, it's so that... exciting. Sorry, I'm butting in on your questions, Rio, but just something you said there, Evan. So do you have quite a lot of say in the development of products? Like how they like the look and feel, because that is that's just music to our ears. We we'd love to be in that world. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yes, I know. I mean, we're a very collaborative team, um, yeah. and uh, I, of course, bring materials back into the design process. Um, which, if I like them, I might say to the team, actually, I'd quite like this. Yeah. Really simple. Really basic just let the material do the talking let's be very subtle both on the maker mark and on the right we've we've debossed our you know maker mark and our right logo on there so you you almost have to have bought it and taken it home before you notice that it's there and i just love the fact that the material is the essence of the product so i might say to the team like, with this beautiful recycled leather i don't want a four color design printed all over it let's just stick with something very basic but then equally i'm not a graphic designer um, I interfere too much, uh, but I'm, I'm not a graphic designer. Uh, and I had a wonderful girl called uh, Rosie Tooth who, who helped uh, with the, 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 the brand identity event back in the very early days. And she is a very good graphic designer, uh, a young uh, graduate out of Oxford Brookes University when she first joined me. And I just handed it over to her. I said, look, you're my target audience. You know, you're young, uh, early 20s, I should say. Uh, you care about the environment. You're a graphic designer. Um, what you want to create now is what I want our customers to love. Mm -hmm. And we are yeah. after your demographic. Um, so she created the first ideas uh, collection. Uh, which was very nice actually we got a, a design award for that rather than an ethical or a social or an environmental uh, award. That's nice, we were, yeah. Yeah. Without sounding blase, we were used to 
picking up that sort of thing, but to, to be recognized for the design was lovely. Um, and then she went on equally to design the new notes collection um, and she will be involved in that more colorful graphic style uh, that is, is part of our offering. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, th th there's other stuff that's coming out at the end of the year, which is more about the materials. Uh, yeah. So that, that is more of me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And there's a little bit of you coming out next year, then, is there? There's a little bit of me. Yeah, exactly. this year. Yeah, oh, but, so, um, shout out to, to Rosie because her work is just marvellous. It's, it's beautiful. Yes, yeah, yeah, really beautiful. Yeah, yeah, R R Rosie too. It's a Rosie illustration and she does some wonderful stuff on Instagram as well. So uh, she doesn't know I'm doing this interview, uh, but oh. uh, you know, take a look at her stuff as well. Uh, and <laughs> oh, well more done, about, more about uh, female empowerment and uh, uh, mental health as well. So uh, Fantastic. Oh, great. Yeah. Very so, talented. Definitely, yeah. we will we'll check her out. Mm -hmm. And just speaking about your um, team there, Evan, as well, just leads me nicely to the next question as well. To just to speak about your current team and who's in, you know, the team at Vent, um, you know, and how do you engage uh, with your employees, you know, about their sustainable efforts of what Vent do? I missed you some of that. The, the, the team that I've that I've got has. Uh, so if I don't answer it in full, you, you, you pick pick me up on it. But the, the oh. team in terms of event, well, Lucy, who works on the, the, the she's the retail sales director, uh, trying to get as much out there on the shelves as possible. Uh, the more we sell, the more we can support. So, you know, we're unashamedly commercial in that respect. Um, and then we have Yvette Kath, who helps with the, you know, the administration and the, the pick and pack and, uh, and myself. But we borrow quite a lot of resources from everything environmental as well, which is the sort of parent company. So that, that company has got other designers and uh, accounts team. And so, you know, I turned my attention from just the planet to people and the planet several years ago. But it's been very helpful to uh, beg, steal and borrow from everything environmental resources that, uh, that have helped us get off the ground that otherwise a, a small startup wouldn't be able to afford. Uh, so it's lovely that, you know, those guys who are working on the other side of the business get involved when I need them and yeah. you know, I drag them by the ear out of, <laughs> oh, can you help with the IT? Can you help with the website? Uh -huh. You know, that sort of thing. So uh, it, it's a collaborative approach. Yeah, to, yeah. To, yeah. It's, to it's always that way in a small team, isn't it? You end yeah. up like overlapping roles, but in a way it's nice because everyone knows what's going on. So it's not like you're never in your little <laughs> silo. <laughs> well, <Yeah>. sometimes. <laughs> they do, but only because they're great. Yeah. <laughs> Not because my communications anything oh. to home, home about, you know. They, they keep they keep a watchful eye and, a, and an ear out for what I'm trying to develop, you know, from minute by minute, um, yeah. and, and they rein me back in. But yes, it's it's been a lovely journey. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because on the other side of it, on on the education side, um, I run uh, Share a Pencil Day. I'm not sure um, that you, you're yeah. familiar with that, yeah. and. <laughs> That, that that takes a lot of my time as well. So I have to sort of rely on others to sort of step in when that comes around each year. Mm -hmm. um, the Share a Pencil Day, we, we, we're, a lot of people in the early stages said to me, you know, what are you doing for children in the UK? Mm -hmm. Because you're giving to projects that in the main part are overseas in developing countries and etc but you know there, there is an education crisis in the UK and in western countries as well to a, to a large degree and that got me thinking and I wanted not to sort of step in and help with the education system in the UK you know we're, we're too small for that um, and uh, and we're not educationalists but if we could help teach some of the children in the UK about the issues that kids overseas face in getting their education, I felt that that was a really important message to get over to UK schools. So uh, before launching Vent as a, you know, a stationary brand, when I was still researching how I could give my pencils away to people, uh, I came up with Share a Pencil Day, which basically teaches for free uh, primary and secondary school children across the country uh, why kids aren't going to school you know the teenage marriage for the, the natural disasters the war and conflict all of those things that we touched on earlier uh, and what a difference that makes to children when they can't access that um, and during that one lesson on that one day which tends to take place in May each year they have to share one pencil between two kids so that they understand what it's like not to have all the resources that we take for granted. So they're given tasks that they have to do 
and yeah. it might be a word you know across word search or you know, that sort of thing or you know but writing out some answers and they have to do it in pairs and they have to share just one pencil and it goes backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and etc and so that's a really tangible use of the pencil uh, to, to, to engage children in the topic of global education, which otherwise can be quite hard hitting and quite uh, doom and gloom and, and things like that. And on Earth Day, I have to say, I was really pleased that uh, the day before, uh, so, so yesterday on the 21st, there was a, a, a huge um, event virtual, obviously this year, which was all about uh, educators and how educators through schooling can help tackle climate change right so that really brought together the, yeah. the sort of people and the planet which is exactly what you know the, the phrase that i keep using and uh, so how education can play its part in tackling climate change yeah amazing and, uh, it's a really good thing. yeah so so that was and i'm sure for i haven't gone back you, you've mentioned already the earthday.org website yeah I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of that virtual interactive stuff would have been recorded. Right. Um, so if people are interested, I, as I say, you know, I haven't gone back to see whether they have, mm -hmm. but I expect that there will be resources there that people can you know, refer back to and draw upon. Great. So there's, for people listening, if you want to get the, the kids involved or whatever age, really, you can go back and hopefully there'll be some resources on that website. Um, can you remind us again when Share a Pencil Day is and how people can get involved if you'd like to? You mentioned, I think it's in May. Normally it is in May. We, yeah. we, since 2017, we've run it in the, the, the week following the year six SATs exams. Because okay. uh, that's the sort of one week in the year where schools can say, okay, let's go off curriculum, etc. For all the obvious reasons, last year we ran it virtually yeah. uh, so that kids could, could do it from home. We're, it is a better event done collaboratively in groups, in pairs, in the classroom, etc. Because they have to, you know, do this sort of sharing of uh, resources, and they watch videos together and things like that. In the hope that all schools will be operational as normal later in the year, we decided to postpone it from May, uh, in the hope that we can do it in the autumn. So, <clears throat> whilst we go through all of the, you know, the, the roadmap. And we get everything back up and running and schools find their feet again we will set a date for the 2021 event later on uh, we were not going to do it in may this year we just felt that there was potentially a better date where it could be done not virtually uh, a little later in the year so but i mean <laughs> how to find out about it uh share a pencil day .co .uk, uh, yeah. it, it is one of the website addresses that we use you can find it through the the vent for change website as well um but as i say at the moment uh, and, and watch social media if you follow us at vent for change on instagram uh, then uh, i'll be announcing uh, as soon as we've got dates for that sort of thing yeah Great. So that's one to look forward to for the autumn. That's excellent. <laughs> Another job on my list. <laughs> I know, okay. Written on your to-do list. Exactly. <laughs> Just going back to that, Evan, as well, you mentioned, obviously, how, you know, the pencils do fund children's education. Do you get, you know, regular feedback, um, you know, to see how those children are doing that they have funded? Um, <clears throat> We, I have taken a particular position not to go out to any of these uh, projects that are being run. I think, you know, to, to use our resources to send me on an airplane around the world to go and uh, you know, shake hands with, you know, teachers and people on the ground is just polishing my ego, to be honest. <laughs> Um, and uh, and using our valuable resources. So I don't go out. I get at the moment we support Plan International, which is one of the UK's leading children's charities. Um, they've got it, it varies, but between twenty five and thirty children's or education projects running at any particular time. And they also do sanitation and they do mental health. They do a, a number of different things. But they ring fence the, the, the monies that we donate towards their education programs. So I get regular feedback from Plan International as to what projects they are running uh, and how those projects are developing and, and things like that. Um, it, it's not my place to pretend to be the expert in that field. That's what they do. They do it brilliantly. Um, but, you know, we've already seen that the government has reduced the, the overseas development package. Um, and this is what we... We foresaw 
you know, some time ago. And uh, so the, the likes of Plan and other smaller charities, uh, they, they all need uh, private support as well as government funding. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we just hope that we can uh, do our bit as marketeers and as you know, designers uh, and as business people and entrepreneurs to give a little bit back to those people that know exactly what they're doing. Yeah. 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 Hundred yeah. percent. No, it sounds like you're doing some great work there. Um, and from pens, from pencils to pens, um, we've done a little bit of research as well. And apparently, over a billion disposable pens end up in landfill each year in the UK alone. Um, so a cr crazy figure. So how how yeah. yourself obviously you know as vent, how would you summarise the difference in vent in vent stationery and have on the planet over perhaps purchasing perhaps an unsustainable alternative? Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we have, I mean, it, some people say just, why is my recycled pencil not recyclable? And I say, well, hopefully you'll use it all the way down until there's not very much of it left at all. Um, uh, we believe in each of the different materials that we use has got a different benefit over its virgin alternative. Um, but if we are making a pencil out of a plastic CD case, for example, we're stopping yeah. the CD case from going into landfill. Uh, we're stopping a wooden pencil being produced from felled timber um, and uh, we're spreading a message. So just, the, you know, the humble pencil has got a, a number of different elements there which are beneficial over its, its virgin alternative. And when it comes to the notebooks, you know, if, if we can produce a notebook with an FSC certified paper or a recycled paper, um, you know, the technology these days, despite what some uh, of the older generations might believe is, you know, it is better to recycle paper than to cut down uh, new trees for, for, for virgin paper. Um, and, and the leather, again, the leather we, that we're using is stopping that from going into landfill. In the first instance, we're giving it a second life, a useful life, a longer life, um, and, and reconstituted cards and, and things like that. You know, it's just better to reuse um, th th than to just chuck stuff away. I also believe that, you know, we make a good quality product. We don't make anything uh, cheap and cheerful out in China or anything like that. All our books are made here in the UK or in yeah. Italy to the highest standard because we want it to last and we want it to feel like it's something that people want to use uh, on, a, on a sort of ongoing basis, uh, not, not sparingly, but, you know, yeah. to, to, to think about its life cycle. Um, and uh, you know, to, to, you, we should be doing it in all walks of life. We should be buying responsibly. So the, the first thing that I can do is offer up that alternative that people can choose uh, if they want to. Of course, yeah. And just just um, going back to that as well, I know you mentioned the pencils and um, the notebooks as well, but I know we, we chatted previously, um, Evan, about the pens as well and how obviously they're slightly more sustainable than your, you know, your average pen because they've got um, slightly bigger ink cartridges. Could you um, uh, just talk yeah. about that? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> the, the, the pens that we're using uh, currently that are, again, made out of recycled single-use plastic, yeah. um, they do have a traditional refill in them. So they're not the exchangeable refills that you can go into a shop and, uh, and buy just the refill to put it back in and I know that that's not ideal um, but you know that that's something that possibly further down the line when we've got enough stockists and things like that we, we can say okay well a stockist that we've had for a long time might want you know refills that can go into a pen that someone's purchased the, the year before or the month before etc but in, in order to counter that sort of disposable uh, element of it that the plastics of course can all be recycled and they are recycled themselves but the ink refill inside uh, that tends to be on your average pen 500 to a thousand meters which means you can write in a nice long line for 500 a thousand meters um, we put one in there that has a two and a half thousand meter write length in there so it, it will last five times or two and a half times as long as uh, as the traditional plastic pen that you might uh, be you know handed at a conference or, or find in a shop so yeah. you know it's little detail like that that we think about when when putting the the, the ranges together I, I, did did I mean who knew that ink was measured in the meters you can you can draw a line <laughs> who works that out really <laughs> pretty amazing isn't it it is amazing interesting life I lead <laughs> <laughs> we got this inside <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's good to know. 
Yeah. Uh, but why don't we touch on the feedback uh, that we get? I, I do get some feedback because uh, harking back to my original design, which was to give away pencils, I, I did set up a, um, and we still run, a, a, an ambassador for change program where if someone is traveling overseas uh, as an individual or as a volunteer, they can call us up, they can go online and they can request that we send them a bag of 50 pencils so that they can take them out to whichever project or community or school that they might be working in and give them away. Sometimes uh, kids in countries all over the world, they, they don't want money off you out of your pocket. They just want a pencil or a pencil that they can actually go to school. Um, and so we felt that was a nice thing for people to be able to take on their travels, on their journeys, et cetera. And we expand that out to bigger charities that might be able to take more than 50. And, you know, if they've got transportation to Ethiopia or uh, Malawi, you know, we've given away 10,000 pencils to one charity that runs numerous uh, schools projects in, in Malawi. And so we do get some feedback from them. We do get sort of photographs of the uh, schools using the pencils, of the children, you know, being given them. Uh, I've got some fantastic photos back uh, probably in about 2019. And uh, the whole group of children uh, sat down all doing work uh, with the pencils that they'd just been handed out. And there was a date stamp on the, on the photograph. And it was the 25th of December. Oh. And I went back to this particular volunteer and I said, what do you do? Have you got the date stamp wrong on this? And they said, no, no, no. They were so excited. They'd rather be in school oh. on Christmas Day. Wow. Yeah. Um, that and, must uh, be amazing for you to see those photographs of yeah. your product, your brand and your everything that you've, you know, you've orchestrated. And then just to see it in everyone's hands. What a moment for you. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah it's, it is. It's very rewarding. Yeah. It's very rewarding. Yes. Yeah. 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 So it's, uh, wow. I have to be quite humble about it, otherwise I get too <laughs> yeah. emotional. Yeah, because well, <laughs> yeah, don't exactly. want to do that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, that sounds amazing though, Evan. Um, you know, I think that must be a really humble experience to see them back. Um, and just moving on really to the um, final question for myself is, you know, the exciting future that brand has. Um, obviously, if you've touched upon some you know, kind of sneak peeks of what we you know, can see in the future, but, you know, kind of what else is there? What, what else have you got in, in store for us in the future? Well, it, it, we're going to stick to stationery. I mean, yeah, I think lots of people say, oh, goodness, you know, with a sort of brand identity that's so deep and so rich, you, you could do all sorts of things. And, you know, our, our retailers might say, well, we're going to, we, we want sort of water bottles and things like that. I think, you know, for a little while, there's water bottles out there that are doing good for the environment and, and, and et cetera. And we might have a couple of organic bags that we bring out. But to all intents and purposes, we need to identify ourselves as a sustainable stationary brand. You know, we love stationary and we want to focus on that. We are really focusing on getting as many retailers selling through um, as much as we can. As I said earlier, the more we sell, the more we can support. And we don't want to be sort of branching out into a, a million different areas. So just trying to find good uh, lifestyle gift retailers. Uh, we're not stationary covered. Uh, so it's not, you know, for the sort of Vikings and, you know, Kingsfield Heath, or it's, it, it, we're not going to be stocking up sort of bulk boxes for people's offices, things like that. It's, it's a lifestyle brand that's got a story to tell. Um, yeah. I need to focus more on uh, on our online story, on our Instagram story, and get the message out there so that people at least know what we're doing and set an example to others that it can be done. Um, but to develop and to design good quality, sustainable products um, enough and regularly enough to keep return buyers interested and uh, to keep our retailers you know, interested that stuff's coming out. We're not going to have a huge range by the end of 2022, 2023. We're going to have the right range. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it will be all around sustainability. It will be around quality. It'll be around affordability. Um, and uh, just try and spread the word. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love to hear that. So I think that's everything from my side, um, Evan. Was there anything from yourself, Sarah, you wanted to ask Evan? I think I've said enough. I've probably sp yeah. <laughs> spoken long enough. I'd like to Lots. thank anyone that's that's watched it to this point. <laughs> no, it's been fascinating for us to hear because yeah. we love Bent so much, Evan, and the thank good work you. that you do. So yeah. thank you so much for taking time out of your day to chat to us. Happy Earth Day. Thank you for your support, Craft. And... Uh, 
See you all soon.